Good evening, everyone. Nice to be here. Um, so we're just going to go through um, our agenda. We'll talk a little bit about the purpose of tonight's meeting, um, and then we'll go through. We'd like to do some exercises with you because we'd like to learn a little bit more about your desires for the perimeter fence that will be at the back of the property uh, behind the stadium. So um, let me uh, just go through the agenda quickly. Uh, so we'll talk a little bit about the meeting goal for tonight and the project conditions. So that's the approval of the stadium, some of the conditions we want to highlight, as we said, uh, the perimeter fence. That's really our, our goal. Um, we'll introduce the three of us. Um, you may have seen me before at these meetings, but these two uh, individuals are relatively new but have been working on the project. A uh, little quick uh, update as to what's going on with the stadium and just remind you what, what it looks like and what we're doing there. Uh, and then we have some group exercises to solicit feedback, again, primarily about the perimeter fence, and then we'll talk about um, We'll summarize the meeting and then we'll say what the next steps are. So uh, today's goal is to review and discuss the perimeter fence options with community input. Uh, the planning commission condition uh, is what you see down below. I'll read that out for those of you who can't see it. In conjunction with the T.C. Williams Neighborhood Forum, condition 106, ACPS shall develop, implement, maintain a comprehensive landscape and fence improvement plan for the western and southern property lines between Parker Gray Stadium and adjacent residences. The landscape and fence plan will strengthen the visual buffer between the stadium and residences and provide a physical deterrent to scaling. So I'm Paul Lund. I'm with uh, Horde Coppola Mach. I'm an architect and principal in charge for the project. Hi, everybody. My name is Janine Katab. I'm a designer and architect with Hort Copeland Mott. I'm also an Alexandria resident, so I'm very passionate about this project and hopefully getting to know everybody in the community. Thank you for being here tonight. Good evening. My name is Josh Kilrain. I'm a landscape architect with Hort Copeland Mott. I've been involved in the stadium project up to this point, but this is my first time here at a community meeting, so it's nice to see. Uh, such a nice turnout and to see some faces and get to know some of you and I hope that you'll um, take part in the exercises that we have they're simple they're easy there's no wrong answers uh, what we really want to do is uh, focus on gathering information and input from all of you so that we can start to distill that information and come up with a solution for the perimeter fence that that works for uh, the school and the community thank you so I think if we have um, time, we'd like to get introductions. If we could just go around quickly and get everybody's names. So if we could start over towards the end. Um, Patty Moran, um, TC Administration. Sue Sutton. Mike Porterfield. Joseph Henry. Cal. Frederick Colbert. Francis Terrell, Senior Civic Association. Carter Fleming. Bill Goff. Amy. We have Paul who's going to give you guys a little bit of a talk about the stadium project. Okay, just a, a quick update, just a really a reminder. Um, uh, this is uh, the stadium project. We're really going to focus on this property line here, and the exercises are going to focus on that. But just a reminder this is the parking garage, this is the high school here, this is the neighborhoods that uh, we're dealing with in terms of this fence. Um, the track, so as, you, as everyone knows, the track and the field will be replaced. The, um, we're moving the press box over to this side, which is here. We are building a ticket booth, which is right here. And we're building a new uh, concession stand and restroom facility also over here with a little plaza uh, associated with it. The ticket booth, uh, as you come in, this is um, if the parking garage is to your right and the school is to your left, this is what you'll see. There'll be a ticket booth and there'll be um, some signage and, and some new construction related to the entering of the stadium. This is all existing, the ramp and so forth. Uh, this is a view of the concessions and restrooms. Um, so 
This is the concession stand. The field is over here to the left. And uh, this is the um, restroom facilities here with a little porch and place that people can um, sit and eat uh, food from the concession stand. And then this is if you were on the football field sort of looking uh, towards the, the woods neighborhood. This is um, the, the toilet building, concession stands here. And then there's a storage room space at the left hand side. So um, what I'd like to do now is to get into a couple of these exercises so we can get your input, hear your thoughts um, as to the perimeter fence. So I'm going to hand this over to uh, Josh at this point. So just to talk about the perimeter fence conditions a little bit before we get started. One thing I want to mention is part of this project is we're getting a new TOFO survey and a new boundary confirmation. Now that the property line will be staked out as part of this work so that you can all go out there. I understand there may be some, some questions about where the current fence is versus current property lines. Maybe there's some confusion of where that fence lies if it's on a neighboring property to the school property. So we're going to be confirming that through a field run survey and uh, boundary confirmation. So you'll be able to walk out there after they stake that out and see exactly where that property line lies. So that won't be a question any longer. Um, we also have uh, a new tree survey that's going to be done. So um, all, all of this existing vegetation along both property lines will be confirmed. Uh, locations, species, health, whether any of them are dangerous and need to come out. You know, if they're you know, on, on your property versus the school's property, if it's half on, half off, we're going to have an exact uh, inventory of all that vegetation because part of this project is vegetation working in a system or as a system with the perimeter fence to achieve those goals of those conditions uh, that were set forth by the Planning Commission. We do have uh, a few uh, challenging areas on the site. Um, we do have varying uh, elevation along this property line. Uh, we know there are, there are some existing holes in that vegetation right now. Uh, part of the, the process for the stadium project was uh, showing what we're going to do new planting that's required as part of the, the code for the project size and what's required uh, on that level. Uh, what we're also doing is trying to plug some of those holes, trying to fill in uh, that vegetative uh, layer to provide an extra level of screening. Again, we're hoping that's going to act uh, as, as part of a system, perimeter fence, with existing vegetation and new vegetation. And then we have some other challenging areas over here where we have uh, kind of a depression here, uh, where we've got a sewer outfall. So we do have. Um, you can't see it. Um, I know you have a little light on the top. I can't see it at all. I'm sorry. I'll point. I'll point. So down in this corner uh, by the stairs towards the park is where we have uh, some low elevations where we've got some drainage, existing drainage. So we have some things to deal with as far as uh, landform. We're not working with a, a flat piece of land. So some of those considerations need to be taken into account when we look at some of these perimeter fence types because some of them have uh, challenges in working with elevation changes or they need to be designed differently because of those elevation changes. And we've also noted uh, with the red flags where at this time we're planning to uh, start and end the perimeter fence. We're talking about approximately 1,300 linear feet across both property lines, both legs of the property. Are there any questions yet about the existing conditions along the fence property line? So we're going to move into our first exercise. And Jeanine, if you could help uh, pass this out. Can I just see a show of hands of who's been thinking about a perimeter fence and what that, what that might look like or what that might mean from looking out your back door if you do directly abut the property or a couple people? Okay. Well, this first exercise, we just want, um, we're passing out some, some paper here. We do have some pens. Um, just want you to take a couple of minutes. We've got 15 minutes uh, set aside for this. And yes. The budget is $400,000 currently. OK. 
Okay. <clears throat> so what we'd like you to do is uh, just think about qualities of a perimeter fence that are important to you. Maybe it's security, maybe it's uh, blocking views of the school, maybe it's aesthetics. Like I said, there are no wrong answers here. We're just trying to get a feel for what people in the community would like to see in a perimeter fence and what is important to them. We really want to hear as much as we can from you so that we can take that information back to the office and distill it and move on towards the next part of making some decisions and then coming back and presenting uh, those options to you. I don't know whether it's maybe useful to work in, you know, in groups of your neighborhood or if you want to work individually, that's up to you, but that's, a, that's an option. So that you can at least share with us around, you know, what some of the concerns might be or what some of the things that you're looking for um, out of this come out of each kind of, you know, um, area. Basically what we're I, I want a good neighbor that is cognitive so we just and cognitive and has okay. some of the top things that you has some it understanding of what it's sure, like to it live it audio, next door to a field that is much is too small to be shoehorned into a neighborhood. It, You've got your papers filled out, most of you, and we've heard um, directly from some of you, but we're going to go around the room just individually and allow you to speak your mind about um, whatever you're feeling. Well, good evening, everyone. I'm Andrea Mackey. I live at 1033 Woods, directly behind the uh, football field, which, in any case, definitely need a replacement of that fence because the chain link is rusted. It is a safety issue. My top three priorities for the fence would be privacy, uh, safety. I mean, I do not want it climbable because that's been an issue that for my yard and aesthetics. It needs to look nice. So. That's great. That's exactly what we're looking for. Yeah. Here. Thank you very much. So I agree with I, do I, need to push button? I agree with everything um, Andrea said. Um, privacy, an effective sound barrier, or an effective light barrier, non-scalable. But then there are questions that go with all of those comments, like what kind of material are you using? Um, what kind of visual would that present in somebody's backyard? And also what kind it's going to present to the school itself? How high would a fence have to be to be an effective sound barrier? Pretty darn high, I think. Um, are you thinking of a fence as a visual barrier? Are you all thinking of this as a sound barrier? Because, you know, chain link is a very sound barrier. Are you thinking of this as a fence to keep the kids in? Or are you thinking of this as a fence to help protect the neighbors? Those are two very different <laughs> concepts that you're coming with. Thank you. Thank you. So, do you want to answer some of the questions? No. no? That's not We're here just to listen. Um, number one, we said visually pleasing to the neighbors. Two, um, buffer noise. Three, uh, the height to code probably. You know, we don't want to create something that is not going to stand the test of time um, because of a certain, you know, agitated situation that we're in right now. Um, we also thought, same thing, blocking the view um, for the neighbors, blocking the sound, aesthetically pleasing, and you know, same issues. So everyone agrees with those? Oh, here we go. Good evening. Um, my name is Roselle Henry. I live right in back TC school, right near the track. Uh, my problem is how, long, how high will the fence be or brick, the brick wall or whatever. Uh, we're losing a lot of air from the field there in the summertime when it's real hot. So that's going to create a problem. My air conditioner will be jumping out, out the wall. Uh, secondly, it's not going to keep the children in and it's not going to keep them out. Young people want to do something, they're going over a wall because we know that 
with the fence we have now. He can come over any time he want. So that's not that's not even gonna, that's still gonna be a problem. And third, uh, they're just gonna come out of the recreation center or just coming under the school system. School because system. we if it is gonna get a reparation, we're gonna have lights every night at ten o'clock or more. See, you don't live in that area, it's not a problem for you. But if you live there, you gotta deal with lights all the time. So is it gonna be on the school system or the reparation department? So this comes under the schools and it come, falls under um, um, the, the uh, whatever was passed by city council and that's on the website, I can find the actual wording for you uh, back in October 2018. But it comes under the schools and under that agreement with city council, there is no agreement for the rec, uh, rec center to use it. Any other comments? So you say that the football field belongs to the school system? Because I'm sorry, I was talking about this. It belongs to the school system. Is it under the tax thing like that? I don't think so. I think under the tax code, under the tax, when you look up the address, it's under the city. Um, I am not sure about the tax code. I can check back with you, and I can, you, I can send you an answer on that one, uh, maybe. Um, what I would need to what I need to let you know is that the purview for the use of the field is under the under ACPS, and anyone who wants to use the field has to come through central office to book the field. Okay, but both uh, the school system uh, and the Department of Rec fall under the city. Right. Okay. Correct. Yeah. Um, actually, yeah. we fall under the city for funding purposes. Rec wants to use it. it not for administrative purposes, we fall under the city for funding purposes only. I'm a resident of Bishop Lane, and uh, for most of the time on the weekends, I'm in the backyard and trying to chase those people that are on the field. We've seen um, college tryouts for football. We've seen uh, the Seattle Seahawks, a semi-pro football team on the field. We've seen a 50-piece band strike it up on the field. So all these things come to our neighborhoods on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So the question is, who's policing the field? The question is, we need to lock that field because you're going to spend $7 million on this field, and the other people from outside are going to destroy it. So I'm not sure you know, how you take this seriously, but this is a real problem. Uh, four other words uh, all the time, uh, so this is very, very difficult. So not only do we have to deal with the noises during the week, but we have to deal with the noises on the weekend, and that's, uh, that's very difficult. Bill, am I hearing you really right? You want it locked, is that right? A locked field? Big you want it locked, a locked field. Every field that you play football in is locked. From York, Yorktown to, uh, to all of the fields, they're all locked. So I don't understand why this field is an exception. Because this we only have one field. All the other fields well, have different places. I'm sorry, Dad. I'm sorry. No, I, I so hang on, Sue. It's not because we have one field. It's because, it's because of the way that we set up some of our agreements with our fields. Some of them are open. Are so open? this one, up until now, has been open. If you're requesting it's locked, we can certainly take that into consideration with the fence. We need to hear these views tonight, and then we can work on what we're going to produce for you in terms of the fence, so that we're trying to fulfill some of these requirements. Why do people come on this field without a permit? They should be permitted in order to be able to go on the field. Basically what happens is you have your cell phone. You, sell, you tell 10 people to go around and find an empty field. All these people are from Maryland. So when they park their cars in the garage, 44 cars from Maryland 
on your field. I mean, I, I just don't get it. And so yeah, you're going to spend all this money to go ahead and fix this field, uh -huh. etc. And these people are going to tear it up. Why yeah, would you do that? I'm well aware there was an issue, and the, Many the, issues, the, the, an issue wonderful. without a permit. So I am aware that is not our goal, and that is not the way that we uh, we will be operating. So just bear with me while we iron out some of those wrinkles, because that should not be happening. Okay, I, I just have a question. So I'm not understanding because I understand TC has a different home field now. Because when they had homecoming, the place where they had homecoming because it was at night, that's their home field now. Yeah. So, um, this is what the students are coming back and saying. This is what I'm getting from the students who go in. So whatever they're being told, you're telling us something totally different. So we are using the, um, St. James as a temporary field while we begin some work potentially here. So we needed something to, um, to tide us over it is a lease, it's an agreement, it's a short-term agreement, it is not a long-term agreement. And it's also it's indoors, so the height is not totally appropriate, and it only seeks, us, uh, doesn't seek the, max, the number of people that really we can fill a game. I think the best way to do this, if you turn your paper over, uh, there's hopes and concerns. You can replace those words with like and dislike, um, however you want to treat it. Um, again, for the record, just because I know they're taking notes and this is being videotaped, um, it would also be helpful if we just had the papers and you did <coughs> offer some input so we can take them with us as well, uh, because sometimes things might not get picked up in notes as well as they will directly from your own hand. So I'm going to go through some options here, five options. Um, Again, if you think it's junk and it's a terrible idea, write that down. Uh, if you have some feelings that it might be good or it could be improved in some way, uh, please list those as well. So let's start with the first one here. It's a chain link fence. A chain link fence is what you have out there now. I understand that's a problem. Um, there's some pros and cons listed on here. Uh, some of those things are like ease of installation. Uh, you can increase the opacity of uh, that fence with plastic slats. You can get these in tall heights, 10 feet plus. Um, the slats will decrease climbability. Uh, it's easier to put in because the fence can uh, work with those slopes and those different ground elevations that are out there. Um, some of the cons are the maintenance of slats, or maybe you feel that this doesn't offer enough of a visual barrier or a climbing barrier. So if you just take a minute to write some thoughts about this one down, and then if you have something to say, we can uh, cover that with the, the mic, passing the microphone around. Privacy slat are those, those black things you see in there, so they're actually these plastic slats that slide into the chain link. Are they see-through? Well, see-through like that. It's not, it's not fully opaque, but it does offer some screening. Don't forget that the, uh, the condition also talked about the landscape and the fence working together as a, as a unit, right? So there's already trees out there. Josh talked about additional trees, additional landscaping. So think of that also as you're considering these different options. One thing we do want to stress is that I'm going to make an assumption here. You don't want to sacrifice the existing vegetation you have out there that's mature and fully grown and doing its job by putting in a fence that could jeopardize those, right? So there's some things to consider, consider there. You kind of want to have a light impact on, on the existing land so that we can save as much as that's there that's maybe working for you. Again, we're trying to we're trying to create a system here between existing vegetation, some new vegetation, and this perimeter wall. Well the existing vegetation that I had that's behind my house has grown through it. Grown through it. So I would be more than happy to pull all of that up mm -hmm. to replace it because it is absolutely an eyesore and an atrocity. Okay. And then the wonderful mature tree 
that's out there bears this beautiful, I don't know what these seeds are, they're the size of baseball. Mm -hmm. They drop on the shed house, into the yard, and it's it's the worst tree I've ever had in the neighborhood because it's on it's on the other side of the fence. Mm -hmm. But all its wonderful fruit bears and drops into our yard. And it's not like edible fruit, it's just sure. And the tree inventory that we're getting from the survey, uh, we'll identify those. Yeah, and if it was pears or something, I would shut up. Yeah, if, <laughs> yeah. And if there's something can be done about a nuisance tree like that, we can identify that in the tree survey okay. that we're getting, the tree inventory. Okay. But no, you know, that may not have been planted by anybody. That could just be a volunteer that showed up. And that's where it is now. So that's good to know. Appreciate the input. Okay, I'm going to move on to number two. Number two, chain link fence with mesh panels. Uh, you may have seen these mesh panels around tennis courts. Again, they offer a little bit more uh, opacity than just the plain chain link fence. Um, again, with a chain link fence, you're able to get a uh, product that's 10 feet plus in height. Um, one of the cons with something like this, the mesh panels, is the long-term long uh, sustainability of those panels. Uh, they will weather. Um, they will be affected by sunlight. They would be a maintenance issue possibly in the future. Um, but again, this is an easy system to implement. Uh, chain link fence is, is available in a variety of uh, vinyl coatings, uh, black and green to help that you know, kind of blend into the existing uh, landscape. Um, again, same thing with the mesh panels. So take a couple of minutes, write down some likes, dislikes, hopes and concerns of this one, and then if you have any questions, raise your hand, any comments, be happy to listen. Chain links, yeah, chain links, chain link, right? Yeah, it's the worst chain link I've seen. Mm-hmm. Well, vinyl coating does a lot to increase the longevity of the zinc coating that's on the metal. So unless you know the chain, the, the vinyl is cut, you shouldn't have any problems with rusting. All the components would be vinyl coated, meaning post, crossbars, and the chain link itself. Uh, there are some other ways to increase the security factor of a chain link fence. At the top, where you see the chain link ends, there's two finishes. You can get knuckle or selvage. Knuckle means they bend that wire over so it's not sharp. Um, if you leave it plain, it's got the points where they cut it. So makes it a little bit more difficult, a little bit more uncomfortable to try to climb over. The other thing that can be achieved with chain link fence is you can get a smaller fence mesh size. You can get out of three quarter inch, even half inch by half inch sometimes. Standard chain link fence is about two inches by two inches. That's enough to allow you to get a tip of your shoe in there and climb it. You get a smaller mesh on there, it's gonna become less climbable. So something else to consider. How's the sound influence? <laughs> Probably nothing, right? I'm not going to lie to you. You're not going to. You're not going to not hear people through a chain link fence, even if it has slats or a mesh panel on it. So again, that's a concern with chain link fence. Please put it down. I'm going to move on to number three. Number three, a wood, vinyl, or composite material privacy fence. Uh, some of the pros, 100% opaque, you can't see through it. It's got a residential aesthetic, multiple colors available depending on what kind of material you're using, uh, low maintenance with vinyl and composite, higher maintenance is a con with wood. Um, there's limited heights available, uh, unless you're going custom, with, you know, six foot height is the most common, you can get an eight, that's fairly common as well because they're coming in pre-assembled panels. Um, the thing with a, a fence like this is that with elevation changes, it's not going to follow the elevation on a slope. It's going to have to step down where the elevation changes. So you're going to have a step up here to that fence rather than. Why can't you build it up to make it all even? That could be done, but uh, we're going to have to figure out how that would work based on the topo it's survey. Aesthetically better. It can be done. You're absolutely right. It can be done. It can be done. But it's a little more complicated to build, but you can your be done. chain link would be the same thing. It's going to dip where the land dips. That can, that can follow the actual landform. You can slope it. You can actually it's slope those bars, right? So this one will step, or it can be built to the same height all the way across. 
depending on how the landform and existing topography is out there, you may end up with a situation where you can't build on that high because the landform is changing too quickly. What's the ordinance for height? Uh, there is no ordinance. There is no required height or something like this. Well, I think there is. You need a certain height in order for it to work. At six feet, this is going to work. Yeah, six feet is kind of your standard, right? What's the current code you allow know. for resident in a buffer zone residential or commercial like this? Between two homes and six feet in the city? You know, I don't know that information off the top of my head. So, um, so it is six foot um, just as a by right. Uh, there are modifications and variances that can be obtained for an increase in height. To what height? What's the highest you've ever had at residential? No, well, I don't know that I can speak to the highest that we've ever had, um, but there isn't necessarily, in, in seeking a modification or a variance, there isn't a maximum height that's set for that. That would be a determination of the hearing process. Yes? For heights, I guess, in certain places it could be a certain height, in other places it could be a different height, depending on maybe distance from a house or the amount of vegetation. Or I mean, you don't want it like this, but it could, it's three-sided some, some or two-sided? Some families might want it really high, some might want it yeah, I guess you could. Maybe certain runs would be a certain height, depending, and, you know. Uh, I don't think we should guess on this because nobody in this room knows how to, how to stop sound, etc., etc. Basically, what you need to do is you need to get a computer and analyze the sounds as it goes through. No, that can't be done. No. Fence is not going to stop any sound, and that's already been done. What do you? Excuse me, excuse me. This can be done. Just like you can, just like you can monitor light spillage, you can monitor the sound as well. So why do they put up the 40 foot things on 395 in order to keep sound out? Those aren't six feet, those are over 40 feet. I beg your pardon? That's VDOT. I don't care if it's VDOT. I mean, you're talking about neighborhoods and trying to, trying to minimize sound. But this isn't the way to do it, because six feet is not, is not high enough. Bill, would, would that work for you? Is that what you're asking? Well, I think we should make an attempt at that. Get a sound expert, bring him no, in. Not, the, not the sound expert, but would it would be the... 40-foot? Um, yeah, the 40-foot high blocks. Is that what you're wanting? I'm, I'm, I'm just telling you it can be 20-foot, 40-foot, 60-foot. The problem is you have a receiver, and then you have a crown, and then you have a barrier in the middle of this. And this is the worst possible scenario to have the battle. So, the, 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 uh, the so just so we're clear, so to just so we're clear, are you asking for something that is uh, uh, like one of the things on the side of the freeway, it, the it, highest it, height as high as possible, because you believe that's what it will stop the noise and potentially light? Is that right? That, that I is, seem to be really clear on that. that yes, that something is correct. That if, what's the yes. point in doing a six-foot one if it's not going to do anything? So you don't want a six foot one, you want something, so what height would, are you saying that would be a perfect height for I, you? I, I believe it could be anywhere from 20 to 30 feet. 20 to 30 feet, okay. Uh, and similar sort of the concrete blocks on the side of the road, like they did feet off. Uh, so those are those are those are concrete blocks, okay? It's a vinyl lining on the side of it, which is very, very good. So I'm not asking that we have to have masonry, although masonry would be the best scenario because it's the most dense and has the greater mass. So but this here, you're telling me that this is going to work, I'm telling you hundred percent it's not going okay. to work. So something between twenty and thirty feet Correct. like you get on the side of a freeway. Correct. Okay. And you could embellish that, and the better thing would be to embellish that with evergreen trees, etc., because these branches, etc., would mullify the sound. So you've got the two sets. You've got the evergreen trees, and then you've got the fence in back. Okay. That's the case so, scenario. So that's, I'm guessing, does that work for our bishop lane neighbors? Is that, is that the best option? Yes, yeah. not committed. Okay. okay. But I'm just hearing that that's what, so Bill, is, is it, so Carty, you're okay so with that? Yeah, no. No. I think it's too short. I think you should look well, at all the we, 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 Let's get a specialist in and, and let's go no, ahead. No, these are see. our specialists. These are our architects. This is what we're doing as our specialists. These are our specialists. Do you have a sound so specialist? These, these are people who are our architects who are going to be in the fence for us. We have a sound study. We will come in within the ordinance. That's what we know we have to do. Which ordinance? So okay. I, I'm not, we're not definitely not going to be doing a sound study on it. What we are here tonight to do is discuss the fence. 
and potential options for the fence. Do we want to go high? Do we want to go lower? Do we want to block the sand? What are the options? You have to so block I'm the hearing... sand. Why would you go high? Why would you go low? You have to. You have to read the sound. The, the, the sound. How 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 many decibels? So Bill, I'm hearing we we we're never going to block all of the sand. Okay, we're never going to block all of the sand. There's always going to be some sand. So. I, we're not going to go into what we can block and what we can't block. What we're going to say is that we're here to try to mitigate some of the sound, basically, for you. Does this, does it work? I'm mean, hearing from the Bishop's Lane people that you will prefer to go with something 20 to 30 feet, maybe higher, according to Mimi, like you get on the side of a freeway. Yes. yes okay. Absolutely. So we're here, we're, we're, we're conclusive on that for the Bishop's yes. Lane people. Okay. So what about the woods? Uh, uh, name us though, because I'm not uh, sure that works for you. No, 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 that will not work out. No, no way. Right. You know what the hell we're talking about? What? Right. Six, eight, 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 eight,
And I started off the meeting by reading that line by line as to what the city is looking for us to do. Obviously, there's a budget. You asked about that as well. So this is all. Now you're, now you're adding to our understanding of what you're looking for. So we're going to do our best to, to deal with all of these different issues. High over here, low over here, you know, visually good, no chain link. We have to balance all that. So that's what we're trying to do. So please keep sharing your thoughts. It's very, very helpful. Number four is a metal louver fence. Um, some of the pros, this provides a high level of visual screening would provide some amount of uh, sound attenuation. Uh, it's non-climbable, low maintenance. Uh, some of the cons, it does have a bit of an industrial aesthetic. Uh, it does say limited heights up there, six feet's more common, but these panels can be stacked to achieve a higher fence, a higher barrier. So uh, you're not limited to just a six foot so could you, Josh, height. For clarity, could you put a six foot and a six foot? Correct. Yes. Uh, what is the uh, distance between the uh, horizontal? So those are actually almost like a, a Venetian blind, right? So they overlap like this. So you would have space in between, so we are can still move through. Okay, but, but visually, you're not being able to see through that. Yeah, but what is the uh, the width. The width of the panel. The width of the panels between the, the slats. The slats, uh, those are probably, uh, you can't see them all because it's hidden from the one, or, you know, the one on top and the one on top, but they're probably about uh, two, two and a half inches. So it's still kind of scalable. Well, there's no way to really get a foothold on that because they're all pointing down yeah. on the side of the school, let's say, right? So, so it allows for airflow. allows for airflow. Okay. So think of it like a Venetian line in your house. You pull that close and you get to a certain point, you cannot see through it any longer. Can we pull it close? No, they're set in place. <laughs> that's, that's, good. that's a fair question. Fair question. Does it come in different colors? Those could be in different colors, yes. Does it rust? Does it rust? No, it's powder coated metal. So it, I don't know if you're familiar with the powder coating process. It's a painting process that's actually a, a dry powder that's electrostatically adhered to the metal and then it's baked on. Does it peel off? Not peel off. So unless you run a truck into it or something, you should never have any problems with that paint coating coming off. Even with the dog? Just saying. Yeah, it's tough stuff. I mean, you often see it on, uh, you know, city benches, trash cans, uh, bollards, things like that. It's a really typical. Uh, way to coat things that are going to be in, in urban areas and high traffic areas that are going to receive a lot of abuse potentially. Okay. How does that work with change in uh, topography? This is again, uh, it would have to step, but again with the, um, the ability to stack those panels, uh, you can achieve that stepping and, and hopefully keep a, a relatively uh, single height condition across the whole thing. Maybe places where, depending on that topography, it's going to have to step down. But, it doesn't, it doesn't slope like it sounds more likely to bounce off that than wood or so wood. <coughs> I'm going to assume you're going to get some sound through this probably because it is bouncing off some reverberation because it's metal. I can't answer that for you. I don't, I don't know the answer to that. Um, but the fact that it is open between the slats to allow airflow through there, the possibility of sound transmitting through there is also possible. But it's going to be higher sound attenuation <coughs> than chain of course. Yeah. It does, and these these are these types of fences are typically used to screen uh, mechanical systems outside of buildings and things like that. Yeah, no, so I guess I'm trying to picture in my head how that would look mm -hmm. against the backdrop. And that's small. that's if that sounds like a concern for you, and that's one of the things we listed on there. It's got kind of an industrial aesthetic, so that may not be you know the right solution. And then number five, uh, brick piers and fence panel. So again, some of the pros of this, a high level of visual screening, uh, non-climbable residential aesthetic, which also reflects some of the building materials that the school has. We've got some existing uh, brick piers out there at Woods, uh, Woods Avenue at the end of the gate, as well as on the other side where the steps go uh, down on the east side of the field. Um, basically the starting and stopping point that we, no that we noted on the uh, existing conditions plan or the proposed site plan. 
Um, various material options for the fence panels. Again, you're, you're looking at composite. You could do wood. You could do uh, a metal. You could do uh, a Trex material. Uh, some of the cons, again, the fence and the piers would have to step up those elevations. There's a higher potential impact to the existing trees just to build those brick piers. Again, we'd have to study, you know, the dimensions of those brick piers. Uh, they'd likely be square. How uh, long and wide are they versus how tall they are? And then the maintenance requirements would vary by fence panel material, but again, I think we're leaning towards something that's going to be low maintenance uh, because we want the long-term sustainability of this perimeter fence. Does it have um, standard heights, like those white panels? I know that brick piers could go higher, but do those mm -hmm. go like standard to 12 feet or 6 feet? Or? You can get some of those, again, the like 6 feet is most common, right? Because that's kind of your off the shelf. That's what the residential fence where a homeowner is going to want uh, between their yard and neighbor's yard, perhaps. In this case, um, they are available to 8 and 10 feet height, maybe even taller. We're still investigating. Uh, all the options out there. Again, we're trying to achieve a baseline uh, here with your thoughts and input. Uh, as use the springboard to take uh, back to the office and do the next level of research. Anyone have any questions about this or comments? Now you said this is, there's no air flow going through that, right? Well, you know, the fence panels can be, uh, can be designed to be solid where you're butting them or you can stagger them so there's a space. So you do a very full between. So you're blocking view, right? You're overlapping those vertical panels. But between them, there's a space. So you're still allowing some airflow to go through there. So, you know, with a, with a, a wood fence or a composite material or uh, even a vinyl, there are a lot of options out there for those types of things. Okay. Again, you're not providing any, any footholds here. So, you know, higher is going to be better. Somebody's deterred enough, you know, to not go find something to use as a boosting agent to get over over something. Well, I have chairs. Yeah. Do you find do you find people are coming from the school side over the fence into your yard or vice versa? No, just one way. One way. Were they cutting home, cutting like shortcut home or something? Yeah, they're pleasing to our own place. Uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, since we got our dog, it's kind of uh, that helps. a great deal. Yeah. That concludes this exercise. Appreciate all of your input. I think we got some good feedback. Um, again, we're going to take this back, part of our next steps. Read what you've said. We have a record of it. We've got someone taking notes over here. So um, we appreciate all this input and invite more. If you think of more, you can take it back to your, obviously, your communities and talk to your other community members. Yeah, that, that's the question. I would like to maybe get a copy of this. Will there you be a can, yes. So I will post it on the website tomorrow. We'll get it off the text and post it on the website tomorrow. Um, along with any other material I get, I will post up there as well immediately. Would you like to share that link with you all so that makes that helps as well? Um, I will share it in the same way that we communicate about these meetings through the principal, because he's the one that usually communicates directly with you. Is, is that right? Yes. Yeah. So, uh, so I. We didn't get I don't get anything. We didn't get anything. Okay. So my request is for you to make sure meeting. I have your email. So 
So just make sure that um, you put your okay. name, your, your name and your email on the sign-in sheet and I will go down that list and I will make sure that everyone gets a copy from tonight. I'm going to leave the sign-in sheet out to make sure that you can definitely sign in before you go, yeah? Whatever 